Okay, this is uh, problem number seven. This is the last problem in this design uh, based on fatigue uh, tutorial. Uh, uh, the problem says here, a motor generator set to have a nominal rating of 10 kilowatt at 3000 RPM uh, is being designed as an auxiliary power unit for aircraft emergency system. So at least uh, from here, we know that we have a motor generator set, the uh, the, the power, the nominal power or the average power is 10 kilowatts uh, and the, uh, the nominal uh, speed is 3000 RPM. Uh, so in service, continuous load fluctuate, fluctuations are expected to create speed variation of plus or minus 10% about the nominal speed. So if this is the nominal speed, so due to the, uh, the, the continuous load fluctuations during the service, so uh, this speed here is going to fluctuate um, or there would be some fluctuations uh, around this speed by plus or minus 10%. So it can go uh, up by 10% or go down by 10%. Uh, while the current supply maintains the power output at a constant value. So there, there are no changes in the power. The power is going to be uh, the same. 10 kilowatt at all times, but the speed itself is going to fluctuate uh, between plus or minus 10% of this uh, nominal value. So to facilitate servicing of the set, the generator and the motor uh, will be made uh, as separate units uh, and will be connected by means of a flexible coupling uh, that will not transmit a bending moment from one shaft to another. So the, the current set is motor generator set. It's just one unit. And then to make the service easier, so they have decided to split these two uh, into two units, a motor unit and the generating euro, gen, generator unit. And then they are going to connect these two uh, together by uh, a flexible uh, coupling. So the flexible coupling in this case transmits only uh, a torsion. Uh, between the uh, between the two uh, shafts, it does not transmit any bending moment. Um, so, or it transmits power uh, through torsion uh, between the two shafts. Um, so, the the proposed generator shaft the dimensions are given in the figure. So, the figure here shows the proposed generator shaft. Um, the the stop end, which is this end here, is to be machined with a sled runner type kiwi so maybe you see here that there are two lines here in this area so there is a, a kiwi in this area uh, where if you the the the, the uh, coupling can be uh, just uh, connected to the shaft through this kiwi um, for which the strength reduction factor is 1.61 so for this particular area because of the kiwi so you will have uh, some stress concentration and the uh, the, the, stress the fatigue stress concentration factor in this case for the kiwi is 1.61. Right. Um, but if you look carefully, you will find that there is a section change here as well. So the, the diameter here at this point is capital D and the diameter of this part is small d. So there is a change here in the diameter and there is a, a fillet here with radius r. And there are some uh, proportions are given here as well. So the capital D or the larger diameter is equal to 1.6 times the smaller uh, diameter or the section, the diameter of the smaller section. Uh, the radius of curvature or the radius of the fillet here is equal to 0 0.1 multiplied by the diameter of the smaller section. We need to take this into account as well. So we have two stress concentration locations here. Uh, at this portion, we have a uh, kiwi, and the kiwi here uh, generates some stress concentration. And also uh, at this like change in the section, you have uh, stress concentration as well. Determine the diameter D. So the diameter of this uh, section is required for the generator shaft. Uh, assuming that the factor of safety is 1.5, uh, and an infinite life is required. Uh, state any assumptions made, and the shaft material is to be heat treated nickel chromium steel, uh, ground all over, for which the tensile strength of this particular material is 710 megapascal, 
and the 0.2% proof strength or yield strength is 483 megapascal and the endurance limit uh, in the reverse bending case is 400 megapascal um, so it's uh, here is the data the, the given data in summary so the yield strength of the material is given the endurance strength is given the power that is to be transmitted uh, it's constant in this case it's 10 kilowatts the speed uh, is 3000 rpm this is the nominal speed and it's going to fluctuate uh, by plus or minus 10 percent uh, and this actually this fluctuations is going to cause fluctuations in the uh, transmitted torque as well um, the fatigue stress concentration factor for the keyway is given as 1.61 uh, the shaft diameter uh, capital D uh, is equal to 1.6 multiplied by the shaft diameter of the smaller section D, small D. Uh, the, the stub end diameter D is 10 times the uh, R value, which is the radius of the fillet. Uh, these two um, pieces of information are given to us, and the factor of safety is 1.5. So the, the diameter of the shaft is, is required now to, to um, have infinite line. Um, so starting from the basics, so the power is equal to the torque multiplied by the angular velocity. So P is equal to T times omega. Uh, and then if we rearrange this equation in such a way that T or the torque is equal to the power divided by the angular velocity, uh, so the power value is uh, constant, it's 10 kilowatts. Uh, so the, the maximum value of the uh, torque here is where this power divided by the, uh, the speed, uh, where the speed here increases by 10%. So it's the 3000 multiplied by 1.1. 1 .1. This is the 10% increase multiplied by 2 pi over uh, 60 because this 3000 is RPM, so you need to multiply uh, this RPM by 2 pi and divide by 60 to convert it to omega and then multiply this value by 1.1 uh, to, take, to take into account the 10% increase. Uh, you do the same for the minimum torque value where you have the power here is 10,000 um, and then you have the 0 0.9, uh, which is the 10% less times the 30, um, uh, 3,000 times 2 pi over 60. So this uh, part here is omega and then multiplied by 0 0.9 to take into account the 10% reduction in the uh, speed. And this gives us the maximum and the minimum uh, values of the torque. So based on these values, the minimum and maximum values of the torque, we can just simply now uh, calculate the mean and the reverse values of the torque. So the mean value of the torque is the maximum plus the minimum over 2, and the reverse value of the torque is the maximum minus the minimum over 2. So now we have these two values, the mean and the reverse torque. Um, remember I said we have two uh, stress concentration uh, uh, values. Uh, one is based on the Kiwi, and this was given. So you see here, it's uh, Kf is 1.61. This is the... Uh, the strength reduction factor or the fatigue stress concentration factor for the QA that is here. But we still have uh, this transition uh, between the two uh, shaft sections. So we have an, uh, a chart here for this um, uh, configuration and these loadings. We have uh, a shaft with two uh, different sections and then it is uh, uh, the torque is applied here. So we have the diameter of the smaller section, the diameter of the larger section, and the radius of the fillet. We have all this information. Uh, the, the ratio between uh, the radius to the smaller diameter is given, and the radius, the ratio between the larger and the smaller diameters are given as well. So the ratio between the radius and the smaller diameter was given as 0 0.1. So at 0 0.1 here, we can draw a vertical line. Uh, and then uh, we have to choose one of these curves. So it is based on the larger diameter divided by the smaller uh, diameter. Uh, if I go back here, so this ratio is 1.6. So the larger diameter divided by the smaller diameter is 1.6. Uh, in this case, you have to make some interpolation because this curve here, uh, the one, the second from the top is 1.3. 
and the top one here is two. So it is somewhere in between. So we just uh, make your judgment here and this gives you almost 1.45. So we, we have two values for stress concentration now. We have this 1.45 and the one that was given for the Kiwi is 1.61. So we're gonna choose the, the, the higher one anyways, which is 1.61. Um, we have here a shear, um, shear stresses. So we are going to use the, um, the Soderberg equation uh, for shear stresses or shear loadings. Uh, then the factor of safety in shear is the yield strength in shear divided by the mean shear force plus fatigue stress concentration factor times the yield strength in shear over the endurance strength in shear multiplied by the reverse uh, shear stress. If we multiply the top and the bottom of this equation by J over R, similar to what we did uh, earlier, so this converts this uh, shear stress into um, um, or the mean shear stress into a mean torque and converts the reversed shear uh, stress into a reverse torque, which we have actually. Um, and again, uh, the yield strength in shear is 0 0.5 multiplied by the yield strength in tension and the endurance, um, the endurance limit here in shear is 0 0.5 times the endurance limit in bending. So based on that, we have the yield strength, we have the endurance strength, we have already calculated the mean and the reverse uh, torque values. Uh, and then the the KF value or the fatigue stress concentration value is the uh, larger between the two cases that we have, which, which is 1.61. So based on all this information and the factor of safety that was given as 1.5, so we can simply consider J over R as our unknown. Uh, and then J over R is equal to this bracket multiplied by the factor of safety divided by 0 0.5 is yield. So once we find this value, we can again uh, equate it to whatever we have from here. We know that J for a solid cross section is pi over 32 times the diameter to the power four divided by R, um, which is D over four over two. So it is the same as multiplying by two over D here. And then if you uh, simplify uh, this equation, it gives you pi multiplied by the diameter to the power three over 16. Uh, and then we can equate whatever we have from this equation by whatever we've got from Soderberg equation. Then this just gives us the um, the diameter of the shaft, which is 10.67 uh, 